Hello and welcome to episode six of the How to Survive podcast. Six, really? It is six. Well, I'm Chris. I'm Joe. And this week we're going to be talking about a little known Australian film mm. called The Loved Ones. If you haven't seen The Loved Ones, I, well, both of us highly recommend you do. It's a fantastic film. Yeah. It's a, I mean, you can check out the trailer on YouTube, and if that doesn't uh, entice you, mm. uh, then this probably isn't the podcast for you. Yeah. Uh, it's directed by Sean Byrne. Yes. And it came out in 2009. Yep. Uh, I hadn't really heard anything about this film. I stumbled across a trailer and I can't quite remember when. I think I was looking at, I was just looking for films that we could cover on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, and the trailer, it's quite, quite a good trailer. It caught, caught my attention and um, mm. looks pretty messed up. I think it's in the top 20 horror movies on Rotten Tomatoes. Isn't it? Right. So it's, very, it made... it's very highly rated. Yeah. And um, rightly so. Yeah. Mm. I, I really enjoyed it. So as always, uh, we'll be... Uh, covering the full story of the film, mm -hmm. so if you haven't seen the film, now's your chance to pause the podcast, go away, watch it, and meet us back here for some uh, in-depth chat. Yeah, uh, it, it will make a lot more sense to you if you have seen it. But that's not to say you can't enjoy the podcast without seeing it. We're soldier on anyway. So Chris, do you want to give us a quick synopsis of uh, what happens? Sure, so uh, Xavier Samuel plays Brent. Mm -hmm who in the opening scene in the film is involved in a car accident yes. uh, which kills his father. They sort of swerve to avoid a sort of spectral figure right. in the middle of the road, um, a man covered in blood. Mm -hmm. uh, it, his father dies in the crash. Uh, his mother becomes very depressed, attached, yep. as does he. We uh, join Brent a year after the fact mm -hmm. uh, where he is sort of trying to rebuild his life. Part of that involves uh, seeing Holly, mm -hmm. his girlfriend, right. uh, played by Victoria Thane. And uh, it also appears part of that is uh, smoking a lot of weed and yes. listening to angry heavy metal. And strangely climbing up uh, sheer cliff faces. Well, so one of the first scenes is he climbs up the cliff face. Yes. And I think he thinks about suicide. Yeah. Because at one point he sort of hangs off mm -hmm. and then catches himself. But uh, either way, he's, he's obviously going through some... Emotional trauma. stuff, yeah. And in fact, Holly, his girlfriend, says to him, I really don't like going out with an emotional zombie or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, but in a sort of... Jokey way. Jokey yeah. way. Like, it's clear that they've got quite a strong relationship and maybe they're, maybe his recovery is partly down to her. Yeah, and she certainly understands what he's going through. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they're, they're quite a sweet couple anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so early on in the film, uh, Lola, mm. played by Robin McLeavy, mm -hmm. Uh, asks him to the end of year dance. Right. Because um, they're, they're about to leave high school. Yeah. Mm. And uh, she's very sort of like timid. Yeah. And uh, nervy sort of in the way that she's asking. Yes. Him. Um, and he says no, obviously, because yeah. he's, he's got a girlfriend. Right, politely. I yeah, know. exactly. Yeah. There's, mm. no, there's no mockery or yeah, anything. Yeah, he doesn't carry. He just very says, much yeah. like, yeah, I'm sorry, mm. but I've got a girlfriend. Yes. Um, he goes off with his girlfriend. They have sex in a car. Mm. Uh, Lola stands watching them yes unseen which is pretty uh, unusual yeah that's kind of when the other than the, the you know the car accident yeah. in the beginning this is the, when the film starts to take a turn yeah. to the what's happening here. Un yeah. unusual yeah this, is, this isn't normal no mm. uh, and then uh, later on he's, he's climbed the cliff he's sat sort of lounging mm -hmm. as the night of the school dance yep. and um, out of nowhere someone sort of uh, incapacitates him yes and drags him off mm -hmm. Uh, his girlfriend and mum look for him. Not, they're not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> his girlfriend and his mum yep. look for him because he's gone missing and it's prom night. Mm -hmm. um, and he awakens to find himself uh, in the in Lola's house. Right, strapped to a chair. Yeah. Hands and feet bound, bound to the chair. Yeah. Uh, the man who kidnapped him was Lola's dad. Right. Who was only referred to as Daddy. Yeah. Played uh, by John Brumpton. Yes, played very well by John Brumpton. Yes, yeah. one of. The, I mean, the, it's a film where every performance is amazing. Yeah, like really it's, top quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it. I mean, it was never going to win any Oscars, but yeah. they, it's a very convincing portrayal of this scenario. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and they're sort of sat around a dinner table with mm. with a sort of catatonic woman. Yes, it was an ominous. A uh, scar in the middle of her forehead. Yeah, and it's all very creepy. There's yes. like a, it's, it's set up to be a school dance. Basically. Yeah, right. The the living room they're in. Yeah, and they're all dressed up. The, the dad's in a tuxedo. Yeah. The the girl Lola is wearing a, a prom dress. Yeah. And the the first shot when he wakes up is the dad staring at him, and then Lola sort of 
<laughs> comes leans, leans in. into the screen. It's really creepy, yeah. very funny. Yeah. It turns out that, uh, you know, frustrated, I guess, from mm. his, uh, his turning down of her proposal to go to the dance, um, her dad has kidnapped him and they're sort of hosting a weird, sinister school dance uh, at their home. Yeah, where he's the kind of guest of honour. Yeah, and mm. one of the first things they do in a really horrible scene is inject bleach into his <laughs> voice box yeah. to stop him being able to talk or scream. Yeah. And as they're doing it, they sort of yell in a sort of... In the way that you would with, like... You know how, like, family jokes form? Yeah, yeah. They sort of go, we can't hear you, right. like that, as they're like as, as stabbing he's, him in the neck. And he's trying to scream, but yeah. his, his larynx has been destroyed yeah. by... Uh, Bleach. Yes. Um, and then they... I they mean, start eating KFC. Yeah. It's it's other very, fried foods are available. Yeah. Mm. It's basically a lot of stuff starts happening, which is incredibly creepy. Yes. Not necessarily on its own, but by the, the context is given this really creepy, horrible, sinister edge. By the way they do it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, eventually, um, he, he tries to escape mm -hmm. at one point. They catch him again. Uh, this time, to stop him escaping again, they hammer his feet into the floor with kitchen knives. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, which is horrific. Yes. And then, um, basically, they're plan is revealed uh, or their, their, their modus operandi is revealed mm. much like Misery yeah. they get out a scrapbook there's a lot of parallels between Misery yeah there are a lot Yeah, and, Which, um, I mean we talked about Misery last week Yeah, I think we should probably later on we'll talk about what those parallels are yeah. we'll get through the synopsis for now yeah. and uh, they get out a scrapbook mm. she's been doing this for years I assume it's supposed to be like every year when she doesn't get invited to the prom yeah. they kidnap her a new person yeah. to, to toy with yeah mm. and they drill a hole in his forehead and are about to uh, pour boiling water <laughs> in the hole to oh. lobotomise him, cook yeah. his brain, basically. Yeah. You should mention, uh, slightly before this, they, they've drilled his head and he's kind of sat there feeling sorry for himself. And they opened a trap door, which is um, up to now not been noticed in the middle yeah. of the living room. And they start chucking roadkill mm. into the pit. Where you hear what sound? I thought it was pigs. Yeah. What did you think it was? Uh, I I think I had an inkling that it of the direction it was going. Really? Actually, yeah. And the noises t turn out to belong to the mm. still captive, previously lobotomized victims. Yes, who have had their brains boiled. Yeah. Mm. Uh, obviously, Brent doesn't want this to happen to him. Mm -hmm. He manages to escape. Stabs. Uh, daddy in the neck multiple times with yep. one of the knives that he's pulled out of his foot oh, yep. uh, and then pushes him into the uh, open trap door yeah. mm -hmm. uh, where he's immediately set upon by the cannibals yeah by the lobotomised people who have now turned into, cannibal yes uh, he, Brent then gets pushed in by Lola right uh, and uh, Actually, she starts throwing things at him yeah. one of which is a hammer yeah which he uses to kill the rest of the cannibals mm -hmm. before they kill him. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Holly, who's heard of Lola, asking mm. her out, puts two and two together. The police chief, in a scene very similar to Misery, right, yeah. goes to the house, uh, finds, it, finds that there's blood on the floor and everything, goes inside, finds the trap door. While he's looking into the trap door, gets a meat cleaver in the head yes. from Lola. And into the pit he goes. Yeah. Who the, and Lola says, I'm going to find your mum, mm. I'm going to find your girlfriend and I'm going to kill them. I'm going to kill your mum like you killed my dad and I'm going to kill Holly. I'm going to stab her in the heart like yeah. you stabbed me in, in the heart. heart. Yeah. Exactly. So she goes off to do that. Mm -hmm. Brent manages to escape the trap. By, by climbing out. Which yeah, we've already, climbing out. They've already established um, multiple times that he is a good climber. So That's true. Yeah. But he does so by piling the corpses of the other victims up <laughs> yeah. and climbing up on them. Yeah. Uh, Holly is driving to the house as well, hoping to find Brent. Mm -hmm. um, she gets attacked by Lola. Brent turns up and runs her over in a scene that parallels quite nicely the opening car crash scene mm. where he swerves around someone in the road, yeah. unexpectedly, and then runs over Lola. Mm -hmm. 
and then reverses over her. Yeah, to make to, sure. To kill her, basically. Yeah. And then they survive, go home, and everything's all right. It's yes. actually a surprisingly happy ending yeah. for such a nasty film. It gives you pause for thought, though, as he... It's going to have uh, some, some scars. Damage. Some scars. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think broadly, we can assume that everything's more or less okay now. Mm. Mm. But yeah, so Joe, you watched this film before I did. Yes. And you told me that it's the most disturbing film you've ever seen. Well, I think what I said was unpleasant. And oh. I stand by that. Mm. Right? I mean, I've seen a hostel, I've seen Saw, I've seen all the. We've watched a Serbian film. Yeah, all the, all the torture porn and the, all the unpleasant sort of things. Still. This, I don't know whether it was the trailer that sort of made, like set my expectations at it being like a teen movie yeah. with, with a twist, yeah. was what I was thinking. To some extent, it is that. Yeah. And for the first sort of 20 minutes, you are led into, down that garden path of this is going to be just this another... This is going to be one thing, and it yeah. turns out to be something yeah, very Yeah, exactly. Different. But they set that up so well. I mean, even, even down to the cliche of like when the cool girl is walking down the hallway, yeah. they have like rock music playing, just for that one very short slow motion mm. walk. And it, it's things like that. And when the, in an almost soap opera way, the, the characters are kind of represented by bits of music. So that when he's walking down the road, there's this like grunge music, like System of a Down, I think. Yeah. And it cuts to his girlfriend getting ready, and she's listening to like pop. Or something, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just it, it's setting these expectations of these like very two D yeah. characters. Stereotypes. Yeah. And then it's sort of twenty minute mark, twenty minute mark. He gets kidnapped, and it just goes. From then on, yeah. it's just an unrelenting... You, you don't think, oh, they won't do that, they won't do that. Oh, and they do it. They yeah. drill his head. They make the, yeah. the hole in his head bigger. Yeah. And they're going to they're gonna pour boiling water into... I, yeah. I think I They just, stabbed his... They, they show the knives going into yeah. his foot and into mm. the floor. The beauty of it is, I think, you don't see any of it coming, really. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you mentioned that you saw that they were going to be... Well, I only, I only saw... So, so when they open the trap door and you can mm. hear the voices underneath, yeah. I, I think, I thought, oh God, I think I know what this is. I wasn't right. like, oh, it's obvious, you know. Right, right, right. But it was more like, oh my God, is though, are those the previous victims? Like, right, and no, I, I didn't see that until the second they jumped out and started eating yeah. the dad. Everyone in the room went, whoa, that's crazy. And the other part was uh, when they were going to boil his brain. Everyone was like, oh my God, like, they're not going to do this. Yeah. Because you, you, they, you think they're going to drill his head and you think they're not going to drill his head. Yeah, they're not going to actually drill the main character's head. And they, they drill do. his head and you're yeah. like, what? I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like uh, they do a lot of things quite early on to... Um, to unsettle you. Yeah, to, mm. to confound your expectations. Yeah, even, I mean, having watched, as I say, the trailer set my expectations. Mm. Even to the point where... When they first open up on him uh, in the in the chair, we've seen that in the trailer. We know he's going to be there. We know yeah. the dad's going to be opposite him, and we know that Lola's going to come across the screen. Yeah. What you don't know is that there's this the the bottomized woman yeah. sat at the table with him, and as soon as they show her, I was I kind of gasped because yeah, that's it's really creepy. That is, it's a kind of a, a well kept secret. Yeah. That she's that whole be... element of the film is totally hidden. Yeah. In fact, isn't it? It so, is. Yeah. You um, think it's going to be a torture thing, but there's actually something much more sinister going on, and it gets more and more disgusting and emotionally charged. Yeah, and that's what I found unpleasant about it. Yeah, mm. what I th what I think is quite interesting is that right from the beginning, it's really creepy. Yes, everything's like I think it's like creepy in a really hysterical way. Right, like everything's just like ramped up to the absolute maximum. Mm -hmm. Like every shot, like from the point where he gets kidnapped onwards, it's just like like there's something horrible about it. They're just focusing like, on Like, it's this... all sickly and mm. horrible, like, grimy sort of... Like, how they, they're chicken. Like yeah. They're sucking the like, meat Exactly, the like, taking otherwise innocuous behaviour, making yeah. it really, like, horrible... Ugh, like... Yeah, I kind of had to look away. There's a scene where she starts force-feeding uh, the chicken. old lady, who she calls Bright Eyes. Right. And she's got, like, she's chucking milk oh god it's... oh yeah yeah and there's another she, she drinks milk herself and she turns kind of to the camera with her mouth open and there's like saliva oh yeah it's just it's every... really like visceral you know about like things like eating and drinking like yeah, come yeah. across really viscerally mm. and it's and it really adds to the um like how creepy it is how disgusting yeah and how unsettling it is yeah one thing that makes it 
more effective as well is that the characters are really good mm. like we talked about this with it follows yeah like all the characters in the film are like pretty well rounded yeah like brent is um it's a i'd say it's a pretty realistic and fair portrayal of like teen angst yes like what he's like and especially he's not, after what he's, he's his father died exactly yeah before. and yeah. he was partially responsible for mm -hmm. it Oh, that's one detail we didn't cover, by the way, mm. is that the man who is in the road at the start right. is last year's victim. Yes. Yeah, and he's he's actually, like, you feel sympathy towards him. Mm -hmm. His girlfriend is nice. She's not, like, the typical horror movie, like, slut uh, archetype. No. Uh, you know, even, I mean, there are side characters which we haven't mentioned, but they're not, they don't really have much impact on the whole film. I, I did want to ask you what you think about that. I mean, why, why do you think they're in the film? So his stoner friend and mm. the goth girl that he yes. gets with. I think it's like they, because they, the, the goth girl turns out to be, because you get the vibe that she's depressed. Yes. So and it turns out the reason is because her uh, brother is yeah. the last year's victim, mm -hmm. as it turns out. But um, she doesn't know, I mean, he just went missing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they, I think I think what the film does is like start out on a few different routes, and you're thinking mm -hmm. like, what? How is this going to tie up? And I do like the way it ties up, but it doesn't really affect the narrative. No, um, you don't think there was a comparison going with any? The, the, I mean, what I thought was interesting was the portrayal of the relationship between parents and children. Mm. So it opens on him and his dad, and they have a great relationship. Yeah. However, his relationship with his mother is tumultuous. It's uh, strange, tempestuous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then you go to the goth girl, whose mm -hmm. parents are obviously very nice people. Yeah. But she's a, a dick to them. Yeah. And you later find out that she's... She's got sort angry, of... Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you've got the central role of Lola and her father, mm. which becomes incestuous. Yeah. Uh, I, I, all I noticed was that there were a lot of... I, I don't yeah. know what it means. Because, because there's, a, it's there's a shot early on where Lola... Daddy mm. gives Lola a dress as a gift to wear to their school dance yeah. at home, and uh, she sort of gets changed in front of him. There's like a shot reverse shot gaze thing mm. where he's like looking at her body, yeah. and uh, in a sexual way, yeah. and 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 like a weird sort of shamed sexual way. Yeah, like, like he, you almost think like the power dynamic is is off somehow in their relationship. Yes. Like he's it's like the bratty girl who gets whatever she wants, like dialed up to the absolute right nth degree. And it, it, they take it to the ultimate extreme in the the scene where she says, who's prettier, me or Bright Eyes? Yeah. And Bright Eyes, Bright Eyes the is the lobotomised woman. Yeah. Is her mother and presumably the wife of Daddy. Yeah. Um, and you don't find out till she smothers her at the end yeah. and says, good night, mummy. But there's a scene where she says, who's prettier, me or Bright Eyes? Yeah. And it, <laughs> this this... Oh, if everyone in the room is just the the worst thing ever, yeah. and he's like, "Well, you're both pretty." Yeah. Oh God. Well, there's the um, there's the scene where they slow dance as well. The father and daughter yeah. slow dance, and she says, "I've realised why I can never find my prince because he can live up to you." Or yeah. Something yeah, along yeah, those lines. You're basically my prince. Yeah. And like, you never see anything. Yeah. They they go to kiss. Yeah. Then... Exactly. Don't manage it. Oh, it's just, it's creepy. It's like a weird, the whole film, like the, you mentioned the music. Mm. Lola, throughout the film, plays this weird, like, teeny boppy, right, yeah. romantic It's almost her song. theme. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it, the whole thing is like, because it's quite a colourful film as well. Like, yeah. she's really vibrant pink. Yep. Like, you know, there's lots of things like that. Uh, it's, it's almost like this look of like a Nickelodeon, like, teen romance yeah. thing. Like high school romance, there's the girl, there's the guy, all that sort of thing. But like, so sinister yeah. and so horrible. Like taking, like we were saying before about the eating and the drinking, mm. taking things that aren't inherently nasty or threatening on their own, but just putting them in this context, and they're just horrible. Yeah, they're so horrible. They are. They are. And also the the direction is really good. I think. Mm. Like. I mean, that plays into it, you know, the creepy stuff that you see. I think that it feels like each shot forces you to watch yeah, a lot yeah. longer than you'd want to. Yeah. So, you say in Misery, uh, uh, by way of comparison last week, mm -hmm. the, the hobbling scene, that's sort of the climax of the film. It's building to it at all times. Yeah. They only show you one leg being broken and imply the yeah. other one happens, right? <laughs> but this one, from the half hour mark, you see 
Knives going into flesh. Knives going into throats. Yep. Hammers to heads. It's it, and it never cuts away. It just it, it shows you it in a very you you can't help but look yeah. even though you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting that you say about like not being able not, like you it doesn't pull away, like the mm. shot doesn't turn away. Because right at the start of the film there's the sex scene in the car. Mm. Uh which which is like it's it's interesting because a lot of horror films open with something similar like that. Yeah. And then it's almost like because there's always been this history in horror films, like teens do, teens have sex mm -hmm. and then they get punished for it. Right, yeah. Right. In this, it's like, even though it's quite a sexual encounter, mm. it's quite like loving still and yes. like it's romantic. But then you're, you, you're watching like you you know, naked it. people and yeah. all that sort of thing. They're, they're... And, then, and then obviously Lola's there watching mm. and suddenly everything that you've been seeing takes on this like voyeuristic, like horrible quality because you just, you can only think of it in terms of like like Lola, yeah. we've been staring at these people being intimate with one another. Yeah, right. And you don't want to take on the role of Lola. No, exactly. She's Definitely very, not. very nasty. Lola is a great, like, an unknown mm. movie villain. villain. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, one of the greats, mm. right? Towards the end of the film, she, like, gets, like, her, like, head beaten in. Like, she gets shot at, all that sort of stuff. Mm. She gets, um, like, hit over the head... Uh, by uh, Holly, mm -hmm. she gets run over, yeah, and like, and then she's like still like crawling along, yeah, still going for it, and somehow none of that seems like contrived or no, ridiculous because, because of everything that's happened up to that yeah, point, yeah, because of how mad she's portrayed as, yeah, but like, but like, mad in a way that you can believe rather mm -hmm. than like supernatural or the, the power, the power balance you mentioned earlier between her and her father, mm. that's really interesting because obviously. She relies on him to do heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. And he's obviously... I think he must have set it up in the first place. Yeah. This... Because she's like... The, the drilling... It's the first time she's drilled anyone. Yeah, yeah. And he tells her how to do it. I, I think the the idea that she's like a spoiled brat and he can't say no to her does stand up. Because right. It's, so do you think that he's... It's implied that he's been doing these things on her behalf. Yeah. And doing it for behest. years. Yeah. And like... I, I don't know whether there's a subtext of that's how the mother became lobotomized right, as well. Right, yeah. Because it was because the mother and Lola, Lola clearly hates the mother. She ends up murdering her. Yeah, and like there's some weird and like yet the father doesn't quite have the same hatred of her. Yeah, he kind of feels bad for her. Yeah, as you would. <laughs> Why did you call her bright eyes? I don't know. I think it's just a creepy thing to say. Yeah, so it's like a it's almost like an ironic, like sarcastic mm. name for her, isn't she? Because she's dead behind the eyes, basically. Yeah, <laughs> he really he really is the the most horrible series of events mm. I've seen. I mean, it's not. The kill list is bad. Serbian film is bad. Yeah. But it's not nice. Like, the, the cannibals in the basement is almost like The Road, the Cormac McCarthy novel and the, yeah. the film. Like, it's something so horrible mm. and, like, grotesque about it. Like, the idea of being imprisoned, like we talked about again, like Misery last week, like Seven with the sloth thing. There's something quite powerful, like, horror about mm. that being about being imprisoned yes uh, and stuck there like that if you look back on the movie retrospectively you can see all the hints that he's going to get his head drilled there's bright eyes is yeah. the most important one then there's the first the opening scene on when she's getting ready for the party yeah uh, this is Lola when she first gets the dress she's like drawing a heart around his face in the yearbook mm. and then she draws a big circle in the middle of his forehead oh, right yeah and I picked up early on. I saw, I saw the trailer. There's a drill. They're going to drill his head. Yeah. Didn't think they'd actually do it. Didn't think they'd do it. I thought it was just like a bit of foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Turns out they did it. Mm. But there's a lot of that um, forehead stuff. Yeah. I was wondering if you picked up on that. I didn't, but that's a good point. There's mm. also the... Um, she draw, she draws. They carve a giant heart into mm. his chest as well. And you see the guy who's in the road at the start of the film mm. who causes the car crash, the previous victim also has that yeah and it's like you know another part of the tradition that's probably why she draws a heart around mm -hmm. the head is you know similar foreshadowing yes exactly so joe i want to ask you a question go on what are you like at public urinals fine yeah are yeah. you all right with urinating under pressure yeah i don't i don't have a nervous bladder so to speak okay. i've never never found that problem okay. you, you i di i don't i i i prefer the comfort of uh my own home, right. as, as would anyone. Oh, sure. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, 
So well, why do you ask? Well, I don't know if you remember Joe, yeah. but in the film The Loved Ones, yes, uh, there's a scene where he, as presumably a sort of um, nascent attempt to escape, yes, says that he wants to go to the toilet, mm. and uh, basically it becomes clear that they're not going to take him to the toilet. No, he and has to go he has where to, he sits. Yeah, and if uh, if he doesn't. <laughs> They're going to nail his penis to the chair that you sat on, and they start counting to ten. Yeah. And as someone who I'd like, I don't, I don't love. I don't think anyone loves a public toilet where you're like pressed up with a load of other men. No, exactly. Like a, a football game. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's it's not pleasant, right? Imagine the pressure. To pee, <laughs> yeah. and because he doesn't actually, it, it doesn't seem like he actually needs to pee anyway. No, he made it up. Yeah, yeah. to try and escape. Yeah. So imagine ten seconds <laughs> to force enough urine out of your bladder. Yeah. To save your penis from being nailed to a wooden chair. But he manages it. He to does. His credit. Yeah. He's got obviously got a very active prostate gland. It was yeah, that was a tense. And then they they play so well, and he's the the sound of that guy flicking the night the, the nail. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, like, oh. and like by this point, all bets are off as well. Like really, mm. you start to think because, as you say, like the film doesn't really pull any punches. Like they do drill his head. Yeah, they do all this and that. Like it's perfectly possible they could end up like nailing his penis to the chair. Right, it's pretty horrible. It is, and it, that that scene leads to her after he finishes peeing, she says weirdly, "Oh look, it's crying." Yeah, let me kiss it better, or should I bite it off? Yeah. Which kind of scuppers what could have been a plan of seducing her. Yeah. Because uh, you you get her into bed and she just bite your willy off. <laughs> That's not what you want. Yeah, I think I think uh, we'll talk more about this when we discuss yeah. how to survive. Mm. Uh, I think any seduction related methods of survival are out are probably unlikely. It seems to be like once you've turned her down once. Mm. That's it. All you get one off. chance. Yeah. Although I I wonder if he'd said yes, let's go to the dance. Yeah. Would this have happened? I don't think it would. I think it's like... You think it's a punishment for saying no? Yes, exactly. And yeah. no one's ever said yes to her. Exactly. Right. Because she's mental. I think that's fair. Yeah. I don't think you're breaking rule for me. Right. Yeah. So before we talk about how we'd survive this film, mm -hmm. I want to talk about how we actually first pick the films to talk about on this podcast. Right, yeah. Uh, neither of us had seen this film before we watched it for the podcast. No. Uh, it would be very boring if we just watched films with seen before all yes, the time exactly. um, so we've got to mix it up a bit mm -hmm. we do have some genres and stuff that we try and avoid because they're basically there's there's certain genres of horror which are either impossible to survive or put the protagonist out of control of whether or not they can survive for a long time yeah so it's things like torture porn yeah so like hostile, hostile saw mm -hmm. all those sorts of films where the, but, the, the very point of the film is there's only one way to get out yeah or it's, you know, you're trapped in this chair mm. and then you have a window of opportunity and you, like, kill the person who's... You know, that's, that's the yeah. one way to survive. Basically. Right, yeah, yeah. Whereas... And th there's also the sort of paranormal activity-style films yep. where it's, like, hauntings and things like that where it's not really clear, especially with things like paranormal activity. Yeah, where it changes it's, it out. It's, they, they make it up as they go along. Exactly. Yeah. There's, no, there's no clear rules for us to sort of play off against like one no. of one of the things that we set out before we start talking about how to survive each film mm. is uh, you can't really break the rules that the film has established You're right and uh, I mean good examples are It Follows which yeah. I mean they the film is built around the rules of, yeah exactly uh, the, the curse will follow you it, will, yeah. it can only walk it will, you can pass it on with sex yeah. Alien has those unspoken rules yeah. of you can't kill it because it will it's blood burns the ship exactly yeah and it's very strong and you've got to survive. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's difficult to do that when the film sets up no clear rules, right. which it does in things like Paranormal Activity, mm -hmm. other sort of haunting films like Insidious, yeah. Sinister, yeah. you know, like... All those. Because basically, with all those films, it seems to be either don't be unlucky enough to be the person who's... Received the personal yeah, haunting. Or don't do the thing that... the like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So or like, Don't use that specific colouring book. Or yeah, anything. like whatever it is, yeah. yeah. So... We try and pick films that fit within our sort of remit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it's fair to say that this one is probably the hardest film that we've come up against so yes, far. Yes, because it is the most... I mean, it does descend into torture porn territory. Yeah. It comes out of it again, which yeah, is quite interesting. But, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, mm. 
I think the um, what we should say is that obviously having neither of us seen the film, yeah, it's impossible for us to know. Right, and like the, the, also the schedule between watching it and yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. We, we usually watch the movie and within a couple of days we're recording the podcast, so yeah. it doesn't leave us much room to manoeuvre. Not that we need it. I mean, yeah, it's it's still a worthwhile film. Exactly. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think I think um, I think we'll always still talk about the film just as long as it's not something that we think is just totally useless. Yeah. Yeah. If it was paranormal activity, I wouldn't want to talk about it because there's, there's nothing worthy of merit in no, the whole film. Exactly. Yeah. Especially with regards to trying survival. to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you want to know what rules we were talking about, uh, if this is the first podcast you've listened to, go back to the first episode. We, we uh, go through them. Mm-hmm. We'll probably cover them occasionally when they come up. Uh, you know, it's things like don't uh, change. You can't change the character's motivation. So, mm-hmm. like, if the character is desperately trying to save a person, and that's how they get into the situation, you can't go. Oh well, I wouldn't want yeah. to save that person. Yeah. Uh, you can't do things like assume that you can't assume anything that isn't explicitly mentioned in the film. Yeah. So no, sort of saying Ripley had a gun on her all along. Yeah. Yeah. No saying Lola is allergic to peanuts. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, yeah. Covering peanuts or whatever. Like you can't make assumptions that are outside of the, mm-hmm. your re, your knowledge. So and you, importantly, you do have to survive, which is yes. an important one with this film because the the inclination <laughs> is to just opt out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There is an option. Yeah. Mm. Um, furthermore, if you want to suggest any films, if you think of any films that have like a good survival potential, mm-hmm. uh, then do let us know. The email address is how to survive show at gmail dot com. Yep. And uh, make their good suggestions. We'd love may. to hear from you. We'll uh, we'll cover them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Joe. Yes. How would you survive the loved ones? Well, I don't think I would, Chris. <laughs> like you say, this is probably the hardest one we've had to come up against yet, and mm-hmm. it does leave you the it does leave you with your hands rather tied, uh, mm. literally. So, like, post the first escape attempt, is I mean. You could have made better advantage of the escape attempt. That's, yeah. I mean, that's one of my things I've made a note of how to survive. Yeah. Get in the car, not under it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, does he have the keys? Well, the, the dad doesn't go back in the house for the keys. I don't think he brought them out with him. Well, yeah, okay, well, fair enough. But yeah, no, I take your point. Yeah. He doesn't make a very good fist of trying to run away. Basically. No, he, he, he just Runs climbs up a tree. high on, on their property still. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you know what? the guy the dad crashes the car yeah um, it's a slow moving collision but he, his reaction's great he's yeah. like oh, god damn it they can't believe it's bad luck yeah yeah exactly uh, but after that they take him back in and yes. they n- nail, knife him yeah. to the floor they nail his feet to the floor with mm-hmm. knives yeah. yeah so after that you can't scream and you can't run basically right uh, you have to do you have yes. to make a there's, good there's, fist to that first and attempt. also so there's no there's no way for negotiation. There's no, like, kicking out or escaping. Your hands yeah. are tied. And there's no... I mean, we, we mentioned don't try and seduce her because, mm. <laughs> A, you can't talk, and, B, she'll probably bite your willy off. Yeah. yeah. What I think's uh, great, uh, well done, Brent, uh, the character Brent. Mm. Uh, he follows our usual advice, which is uh, just kill them when you have the chance. Mm. Uh, like the the very instant you yeah. have the chance, Daddy gets killed very brutally and very suddenly. Yes, with like repeated stabs to the neck. Yes, and that's that's it for Daddy basically. Yeah, yeah. He, were, I mean, he stood around gaping for a yeah. while, but he's his his, his time, days are numbered. Yeah, yeah, his days are done. Yeah. So like, well, well done to yeah. Brent, yeah, the character yeah. of Brent. He, when he gets the chance, he does he kill him. Takes advantage. Apart from Lola, well, he does punch her in the face as hard as he can. Yeah, and it's. It's probably the most satisfying on-screen punch I've ever seen. <laughs> Just because, you know when it, I don't know, it's a good punch. It is, yeah. yeah. Visceral. Yeah. With those terms established, mm. do you have a method of survival? Well, as I said, take better advantage of the opportunities you're given. Yeah. Uh, so when he, he limps out the door as soon as he gets free, yeah. rather than bum-rushing them. So yeah. you, you, you said he, he, he does kill them as quickly as possible. He doesn't, because... He That's has that true. first opportunity. Yeah. He tries to run away. When, when Bright Eyes is still at the table. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Bright Eyes isn't helping anyone. You got, Neither of those two lunatics are going to help you. Yeah. So, you, yeah. He has no phone. He has, <laughs> it's, it really is a pickle. He's yeah. Like, I just, just take off at a sprint across the field. Take yeah. your chances. 
It's dark. Mm. Like you've got a chance. When he's in the tree, point. this is one thing I I said when I was watching it. Just dr- jump on one of them. <laughs> yeah. Like the, on the man, presumably, and then yeah, they don't have any weapons with them. They're no. just throwing rocks. Yeah, but that would hurt. But yeah, but not Take as chances. D- <laughs> jump on their heads. Yeah, they're probably uh, they'd probably come a lot come off worse. Mm. Well, how about you? What, Tell me one of your. I'm sure you've got loads. So you know. I, th- you know, I said, uh, I said about the, um, like like you, mm. I think you have to make good on your first attempt to escape. You yes. have to realise and don't try and hide up a tree. I don't know what his plan is with that. I think wait until I think sunrise. Maybe it was just a plot point to establish that he's good at climbing again. Oh, that's true. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I just think just a hundred meter sprint. Yep. In a direction in the dark. Yeah. You've got a good chance of. Not being tracked. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of trees around. Mm. Don't climb the one closest to the building. Yeah. yeah. They're not. They're not that remote either. They're not like remote enough that, you know, they're a day's walk in every direction. Or no. something like it's that. not the, the misery conundrum. No. Yeah. When he goes into the basement and he ends up having to kill the rest of the cannibals. Yes. I thought you could pretend to be a. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cannibal. I was thinking. And, that, uh, yeah. Because they haven't got, killed each other. Got the wound in the head. Yeah, yeah. And they don't attack each other. And they don't have some sort of like zombie elemental like sense of who is and isn't a, uh, a, a, a lobotomy victim. Yeah. yeah. The uh, body staircase that he builds, mm. I wrote that down like, oh, you could pile up the bodies to get out. Yeah. And then he actually and he did, did it. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe he actually did it. Like, like you said, drilling and everything, like mm. this film is just sort of like, yeah, we are going to go there. Yeah. We yeah, gonna do yeah. That. We're going to do that. Uh, another thing that we talk about a lot mm. is situational awareness. Yes. Right. Brent should have had more when he got kidnapped. Fair enough, though. He's he a teenager. Was, he was, he was listening to music. Weed. He was, yeah, mm. exactly. It's going to be difficult for him. The policeman, I think. Yeah. He, he, he's, <laughs> the, he's the biggest idiot. Yeah. There I think the policeman must be a distant relative of the policeman from Misery. Because <laughs> they die in exactly <laughs> the same circumstances yeah. where they enter a home... Look in which they suspect either a murder or a kidnapping has taken place. Mm. They find a basement yep. and open the door to the basement to find the person that they are looking for in there. Mm. Both with guns drawn, right? Exclaim, oh, there it's, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah. And both of them get attacked from behind, yep. right? Dead. That's it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a policeman... For, I mean, first of all... Why isn't he calling for backup when he sees this blood everywhere? Yeah, that's true. Right. Call for backup. For I mean, with the misery guy is understandable because yeah. he... It happens very quickly. Yes. In this, he sees the blood before he goes into the building. Yeah, he's practically salivating to get in there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. And I'm pretty sure if a policeman did that, they wouldn't stop and go, oh, it's you, I can't yeah. believe it. Like, I would, I would retain my situational awareness. Yeah. Jason Bourne... As ever, yeah. Jason Bourne in this situation, yeah, would have not even gone through the front door. He'd have circled around, checked every window of the house, said, "Okay, now I know how many people are in it." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jason Bourne. Like, if if Jason Bourne was the policeman in this mm. film, yeah, it would have played out differently. But specifically, Lola would have hidden, having seen the siren, the police lights, yeah, and then she'd sort of edge around the house, thinking, "I wonder where he is." And then Jason Bourne would have like come through a window, yeah, and like broken her neck with yep. a single <laughs> she executed her from. Uh, 60 yards <laughs> outside the building. <laughs> yeah. So basically, get get some better situational awareness. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. My, my final point, like we said, I mean, there's not a lot to dis- There's a lot to discuss in this film. But yeah, yeah. Specifically with regards to survival, mm. it's difficult. It is difficult because you're, I mean, you're tied to a chair <laughs> yeah. and you're now, the feet are nailed down. It's, it's a really hard one. Yeah. Uh, my, so my only other suggestion is, uh, as with Misery, just be a, a, an unlikable person. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically, like, I mean, we, we, I, we were talking about picking the films earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try and sort of pair the films thematically. Right, yeah. And Misery and The Loved Ones mm-hmm. are sort of obsessive love. Yes. Don't be a lovable person. Yeah, you, right. If you're not a lovable person, then you will not be put in this situation. <laughs> right, so just have, like, body odour. Yeah. Yeah. Just be unlikable. If, if his feet had smelled when they were down there netting them down, they would have been like, oh, God. Yeah, exactly. Like, you probably would have bent, bent the metal. Yeah. <laughs> um, I take your point, but with, with this one, I feel it's different because their intentions to lobotomise him. Yeah, but I think it's... But as we said, is, it, um, is the lobotomy a punishment for not going out with Lola? 
And like, Lola, he's not going to in the first place. So what I'm yeah, saying, but Lola isn't. So you're not, you're not talking about when he's tied to the chair. No, no, I'm, ta- I'm talking right at the start of the film. Yeah. Just be an unpleasant character. Right. Just don't be the sort of person that any woman could love. Yeah. <laughs> Including that your girlfriend what, who exactly. you do love it. That's what we have learned from these films. Yeah. Make yourself unlovable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like the film's called The Loved Ones. Yeah. Which I, I believe The Loved Ones is a reference to the, the victims. victims. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the big hearts on their chests. I did ask afterwards aloud to God That's why is it called the loved ones well Joe I think it's because <laughs> yeah I think yeah. it's I think it's the victim well, God's answered mm. yeah. the ones that she loved yeah yeah the only other thing was uh, when you wake up um, tied to the chair mm. uh, just play it really cool <laughs> be like oh like yeah uh, it happens all the time no just be like uh, oh, thank, thank you so much for having me for <laughs> Oh, this is a really lovely <laughs> spread you put on, Lola. I, I I'm so glad that Lola. you. Uh, I'm so glad that you took my um, hint. Yeah. I couldn't say it in front of my friend earlier. Yeah. But actually, rather than Holly, oh, you're, it was you I want. you're the only one that I want. That dress, by the way, looks dashing. Yeah. And yes, you are pretty enough. Yeah. 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 But then, the classic thing with that sort of behaviour mm. is, uh, oh, uh, you must be Lola's mother. I can see where she gets a good looks. <laughs> And then, and then she, Lola hates her mother. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a minefield, Joe. We've got no chance. No chance of survival. Other than what, exactly what Brent does. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, it's the thing is, make your escape. Uh, make good on your escape, basically, yes, is yes. the advice. Who do you think is more mad? The father or the girl? Do you think the girl is like a product of her environment? It would be impossible to say without breaking rule three. No, but assume. we're not talking about no, yeah, I survival. Yeah. No, but, I know, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. I'm... I'm I think I think he is spineless, mm. cows down to her, and she's the mad one. But she's been indulged. So yeah, she's a product of the environment in a sense that no one's ever said no to her. And she believes that abducting uh, young boys to, to torture and kill them is okay. Yeah. yeah. So really, she's the, she's the actual victim in this film. Yeah. In a, in a big way. I have a question for you. Go on. In previous episodes of How to Survive... Mm-hmm. We've begun discussing how to survive by saying who was the first to die. Yeah. And in this one, it was uh, his father in the car crash. <laughs> yeah. So how would you have survived if you were the father? Uh, situational awareness. Joe. Yeah. Uh, make sure you see hazards approaching in the road, mm. especially if you're uh, with a learner driver yes. or someone who's recently passed, as mm. it's implied um, Brent has. Yep. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to take on some of the responsibility, yep. especially as the responsible adult in the situation. Yeah, exactly. It, she... When they saw the hazard coming. Identify and deal with hazards. Yes. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. He w- so you were saying it was the father's fault. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and they, they, would, they would come to an emergency stop in mm-hmm. a safe and controlled manner. And they'd say, young man, are you okay? Mm. And he'd go... Because yeah, his yeah, voice it, box is destroyed. destroyed by blitz, but they would, yeah. they would help him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he made it that far. Yeah. Which is quite impressive. I don't know how yeah, he managed yeah. it. In broad daylight. Yeah. Mm. Um... I think I think had they had a better... I mean, Joe, last week, it's the same as Misery. Mm. A better understanding of the highway code <laughs> would have led to would... none of these events happening. <laughs> yeah. Good point. <laughs> they, would have, they would all have been absolutely fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the lesson to take from this pair of, of films. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I guess one other question I'd have for you. There are other people who die in the film. Mm-hmm. Lola and Daddy. <laughs> yeah. How could they have survived? If if Lola wasn't such a fuss pot yeah. about the size of the hole in uh, Brent's <laughs> head, <laughs> fuss pot, <laughs> then she'd have just. I mean, like, it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter if you get a bit of boiling water down his face. No. To be honest. Uh, well, yeah. Exactly. Because she's like, oh, it's, the hole's too small. I can't get the boiling water in. Yeah. Poor you. Come on. Yeah. First world problems, isn't it? Grow a pair, pra- grow yeah. a pair mate. Yeah. Jeez. Like, you come this far. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, The Loved Ones. I, I've really enjoyed the film. Yeah, fantastic it's film. Just, it's so much fun mm. to talk about as well. Like, Unpleasant. It, it, it is one of the only films mm. in my life that's made me feel genuinely nauseous. It's interesting. Like, what do you think the difference is between like this and something like Hostel? Because it's probably a similar level of violence. Yeah. But for some reason, this is like way different I think in, in yeah I think it's with Hostel you know what you're going to get 
it's it's like basically I'm going in there saying shock me, come on. Yeah. With this, I wasn't, and I think because I had my guard down, I just I wasn't emotionally ready to see someone <laughs> have their brain boiled. Yeah. Right. I guess I guess the difference is that Hostel is a film, or those sorts of torture porn films, mm. exist specifically to challenge like how far can we go with this. Yeah, exactly. Whereas I don't think that that's the filmmaker's intention with this film. No. Because there's too much of a narrative built around the film for that to just be their sole yeah, purpose. Exactly. And with Hostel, I mean, the, the scene that stands out from Hostel is someone gets a blowtorch to the face. And I can imagine that. I've thought about it would hurt to be burnt before. Yeah. But I've never once in my life thought about pouring boiling water into a, a trepanation hole. Yeah. yeah. That's... I think because it's so well thought out, like the same like another comparison with Misery we had last week, chopping his foot off would have been vanilla compared to what she does, which is to break his ankles yeah. with a big bit of wood. Because it's 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 unique, isn't it? There's mm. a like a, a unusuality. Yes. Is that word. Yeah, I, I I'll allow it. It's unusual the word. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but that I mean that scene's become uh, the loved ones will always be. This the film with the boiling, the brain boiling. Yeah. And misery will always be the hobbling film. Yeah. I do, but like as we said before, I think it's a great horror film. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. Yes. I, I had a lot of fun watching it. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like um, agreed. So over the top and so, like I said, everything's just turned up to the maximum mm -hmm. with it. And I just, I just really enjoyed the film. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend going out and and picking it up. We are on YouTube, by the way, listener, if you don't know that. So if, you, if you're enjoying listening to this on iTunes, maybe you want to listen to it again on YouTube. Exactly. And we do occasionally post up uh, different um, videos or mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we post up excerpts from the podcast that have... Uh, Suitable video accompaniment. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, do check that out as well. We're How to Survive. On yeah, just, just How to Survive, yeah. So thanks very much for listening. Mm -hmm. Go check out The Loved Ones. Uh, if you've got any film suggestions for us, the email address is howtosurviveshow at gmail.com. It is. I've been Chris. And I have been sick watching <laughs> The Loved Ones. And I've been Joe. Thanks very much. See you next week. Cheers. Am I not pretty enough? Is my heart too broken? Do I cry too much? Am I too outspoken?